Okay. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, welcome to today's uh, masterclass on avoiding procrastination. Um, my name is Katerina, and uh, I'm here joined by my colleague Charlene. I will talk about today about strategies for overcoming distractions and how to defeat procrastination. So uh, before we start, uh, let us quickly share uh, something about procrastination. So what is procrastination? Uh, that is something that I feel like we struggle a lot with, especially uh, me. I also I'm a lot, um, a lot of time I'm like stressed. I miss deadlines or like it can also decrease performance. And uh, in this presentation, we will talk about how we can regulate that, how to overcome that. And most importantly, uh, to develop some good strategies. So uh, procrastination in itself is an act of delaying or putting off tasks until the last minute, right? Uh, that means uh, that is a form of self-regulation failure characterized by the irrational delay of tasks despite potentially negative consequences. In simple terms, basically uh, having to learn for a task in the morning but uh, purposefully delaying uh, learning in the evening, for example. Uh, a typical procrastination move, I think we've all experienced. And uh, usually no matter how well we are organized and committed, uh, chances are that we found ourselves uh, just flittering around away hours on travel pursuits, like watching TV, updating your Facebook status, shopping online, where you should, you should have been spending time on work or school-related projects. So whether you're putting uh, off finishing a project to for work, avoiding homework assignments, or ignoring household chores, procrastination can have a major impact on your job, your grades, and your life. So let's look at the next slide to talk about uh, the causes of procrastination. So as I've already mentioned, we have the fear of failure. So fearing that we might uh, uh, eventually fail at doing something. Therefore, we just say, okay, I'm not going to do it because I might, might, I might fail actually, right? So what we want to do in this case is to look at the situation from a very healthy perspective and say, it's just my brain, it's just my mind playing a trick on me and not wanting me to do something. Uh, the next is uh, fear of success. Uh, again, uh, the same as with fear, fa fear of failure, we have a fear of success. So what will happen if we actually succeed? Then we actually have to perform next time uh, at the same level. So we fear that, right? Um, so uh, what the next cause could be is also being overwhelmed as we feel always sometimes very overwhelmed. Also the idea of perfection. Uh, what can also cause uh, procrastination is uh, self-doubt, or we can also be driven by negativity and also uh, misaligned goals and tasks. This can be something that often leads to chaos and stress and definitely unworthy of reward. So if we don't see something is really worth doing, we just lay it on and we say, well, why really do it if, if there is no reward behind that, uh, right? Um, Next, I would like to talk about uh, some research on uh, procrastination. So uh, we often tend to uh, overestimate how much time we have to left to perform a task. On the next slide, we can see uh, that there is definitely uh, something that uh, leads to procrastination, which is overestimation, how much time we have left to perform our task, how much time or also how long a certain activities take, and also uh, oftentimes how motivated we will be in the future to complete this task. Uh, let me tell you right now, for example, I'm writing my bachelor thesis. So uh, I also uh, underestimated uh, some of the tasks that are necessary for, for this uh, type of project. I thought that will take less time. And at the end, it took me long longer time. So mistakenly assuming that uh, we need um, the right frame or the mind to work on the project can lead uh, actually to procrastination. Um, and this is also related to a psychological construct called present bias. Uh, on the next slide, we can see that the present bias is a phenomenon observed in human behavior that results in procrastination. Um, so moving uh, to a present bias means that we tend to be motivated by immediate gratification or rewards that we are uh, 
by long-term rewards. So this is why it feels good in the moment to procrastinate, right? For example, the immediate reward or of staying in bed, right? Watching TV uh, is more appealing in long term, uh, uh, in, in short term than it is in long term, which would be, for example, doing a project or learning for a task, right? Uh, so this all has to do with the present uh, bias. Um, if we move on to the next slide, uh, we can see that, um, yeah, uh, we've already covered the present bias, uh, the types of procrastination, uh, which uh, are different types and everybody is a certain type. And it's good to know which type you are so that you can um, actually take the right strategies to combat those, right? In this uh, present moment, we have passive procrastination and active procrastination as the two main types. But don't worry, I will mention another other two as well. So this uh, passive procrastinator is someone that delays tasks because they have trouble making decisions and acting on them, right? Uh, whereas active procrastinator delays the task feel challenged and motivated. I mean, I think we all have experienced this rush, this adrenaline, when we uh, have a certain deadline and we are just hammering into computer the night before, this would be an active procrastinator. Uh, if we take a look on the next slide where we have the other, um, other procrastination types, so we have perfectionist, uh, which is someone who uh, puts up tasks because, again, of the fear that it will not be perfect. Then we have a dreamer that puts off tasks because they're not good at paying attention to detail, right? So they think, oh, it will be okay. I will I will finish it tomorrow. And it, it's actually not the case. They fire someone who doesn't believe someone should dictate their time schedule. So someone who, who is a very uh, free time oriented person, someone who doesn't like being put into a frame. Uh, then a warrior type of person uh, where putting off tasks means leaving the comfort of their own, so uh, not willing to uh, step up. Uh, crisis maker, uh, putting off something because they like to work under pressure, as I mentioned, this would be the active procrastinator as well. And then someone who overdoes things, so really someone who takes too much on and then has struggles finding the right time and uh, right frame to complete the task. Whichever one you are, uh, it's okay. And we are here to help you through that. Hmm. On the uh, next slide, we would talk about uh, procrastination circle. So I think we are all familiar with this, but understanding the science behind it, understanding how all of this works, uh, just makes it more clearer and better for you to understand how to uh, face this, this type of situation. So first we have a task, let's say, uh, a project in, in finance, for example. And uh, then uh, what we start doing when we get this sort of a task, we just look at it, what we have to complete, right? And most of the time we make very unhelpful uh, rules and assumptions. So what does what does that mean? We, we think it will take less time. Then we maybe think, okay, this is too much. I will lay it off later. So all of these uh, assumptions that we have uh, that are often in our thoughts and we don't put it on the paper we just have it on the back, back of my, our minds right and then we have this perceived discomfort and then we start to make excuses right for that well i will not do that because oh i forgot that i have to uh, buy some groceries for, for for this weekend and just these uh and they're flowing the excuses so um, when you're in that mode already in the circle you know that the excuses are coming all the time i know it myself very good also, uh, then we start to do these activities. Actually, they are not a thought anymore. They are activities. So I'm going to text my friend to go with me shopping. I'm going to text my mom if she doesn't need something. Oh, I have to check in my calendar and to book an appointment at my doctor's. Again, all of these activities uh, uh, that we are doing, right? And they give us some short-term reward because it was necessary to call that doctor. It was necessary to clean that bathroom. Yes, it was. And it gives us this short term reward, which is, yes, we did accomplish something. But we, what it doesn't do is that we don't accomplish this, this longer, much greater goal or, or project. And then uh, oftentimes what happens is, is that we fail to complete it or we, doesn't, we don't complete it to our 
best abilities, right? Because we just simply don't have enough time. Um, now, what can we do about that? That's the more interesting question. Um, so uh, in, in, the, in the next few minutes, I will talk about that. So first of all, uh, create to-do lists. We often uh, say in these master classes that making sure that you're organized is the key. So creating a to-do list with deadlines and priorities is something which is very important. Second one, this is I think even more important than the first one because here you have to break down the tasks, right? If you have a major task like complete a project, you will never have this short-term reward of just, for example, um, writing down uh, uh, names or people who I need to contact in order to get this project done. This could be like one breakdown of task, right? So you put these different breakdowns and then you can say, okay, today I will do this and it will all only take me five minutes, right? But at the end, these five minutes tasks will, will take me to, to accomplish the entire project. So um, also setting specific goals and tasks. So uh, what is also good to, to have is uh, saying, okay, this morning I will spend 30 minutes on the internet searching for a potential job, for example, right? So setting that specific goal, that specific time makes it also clearer in your brain to understand and uh, again, feel that you have some control and then you can progress um, in on good time. Uh, just five minutes. Uh, this is something that I do sometimes when I'm really not motivated to do something. Like, for example, researching a new topic or like uh, doing something which uh, requires larger time frame. So I just say, I will just look for five minutes. And usually, as we said with Instagram or Facebook, where we say and we say just five minutes, it's never five minutes. The same thing with something that we have to do, right? It's never just five minutes. And in this case, it's good that it's not just five minutes. In this case, it's really beneficial that it's not just five minutes, but we're going in, looking for, for stuff. And it really sometimes opens our eyes to what task or like what the actual goal is behind it and what we really have to accomplish. So it can be something where you don't have to feel blindsided. Um, the fifth uh, trick or tip um, which could be found on the next slide is reducing distractions. Again, we say it all the time, but it's really something that I cannot stress enough. Uh, reducing distraction, taking the time or setting the timer to reduce any possible distractions, uh, putting on some music, or uh, if you don't like uh, listening to music, just put some uh, earphones on without any music and it's it's just really calm around. I usually do that and it really helps. Also, um, setting time limits for the breaks. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, not taking breaks is also a problem because we don't want to be overworked. We don't want to uh, burn out. So uh, getting the ball rolling by introducing like small breaks uh, can actually duplicate then your energy while you are doing the task. So breaks can really help. And uh, number seven, um, delaying procrastination. So um, uh, sometimes what we can do is, because we are human beings, we have control, we have authority over what we are doing. So as we are delaying sometimes the urge to eat that ice cream because we are getting in shape, or uh, I, I don't know, then uh, we can also delay procrastination in a way where we uh, tell ourselves, okay, later or another five minutes of doing uh, this specific task. And in that way, we delay the procrastination and maybe the, the thought of procrastination goes away and then we can move on. Uh, number eight, uh, nine and 10 are really interesting ones because here uh, we, we are finding another, uh, another person or people who can help us with uh, procrastination. So finding an accountability partner is so crucial. I my my accountability partner actually is my brother. So find really someone who is strict with you and who is not like very nice, nice because they are not always the best people to be accountable um, to have as accountability partners. Because what oftentimes happens is that if you have a strict um, person overlooking you you actually feel afraid to go to them and tell them, okay, I didn't do anything today. Or you really, your conscious is not just yourself, 
it's also someone else. So this is a really uh, good tip. So find somebody who is really strict and uh, really gets you pushing. Also, visualize that, that, uh, sorry, <laughs> visualizing your success can be in incredibly useful as well. So uh, not just thinking or writing down, but actually uh, Pinterest, for example, is a really cool thing for that. Just visualizing how it will look like when you actually accomplish uh, this task or this project, how it will feel, what uh, maybe you can even... Uh, <laughs> tell yourself what reward will you get? You will get the ice cream if you accomplish this and that task. Um, ten, number 10, changing your environment. Uh, again, something that I stress a lot during these master classes, changing your environment is something that uh, can, first of all, change your thoughts. It can um, boost your um, productivity and efficiency. And uh, often, oftentimes, uh, you also can meet really cool people if you, for example, go to a library or a coffee shop. Um, the next few tips, uh, number 11 and 12, uh, these are actually really nice because uh, rather than criticizing yourself, I would uh, say encourage, encourage yourself. We often sometimes feel like if we don't accomplish something by a certain time frame, we are a total failure. But however, this is not the way that we should proceed. Actually, studies have found that if we have a kind word to ourselves, if we encourage ourselves, it's actually much beneficial than actually putting ourselves down. So whenever you feel like, oh yeah, I'm not good enough or something hasn't worked out the way I thought it should, then uh, I would just say, have a nice quote, something um, really positive near, near your uh, bedside or near your table, and you can always look at it and feel uh, empowered. Um, also, ac acknowledge fear and uncertainty if you feel like it. So again, uh, the first step to actually succeeding is acknowledging what you are feeling and then starting to combat it with those positive affirmations can be very healthy. Also, uh, rewarding yourself, as I already mentioned, with that ice cream, going for a walk, or it can even be something completely different, like uh, watching a 10 minutes of your favorite show uh, is something that uh, can help you with procrastination. Mm, good. And uh, finally, I would like to share something with you, which uh, uh, is uh, really special to me uh, because um, um, we have two more tips, which I found uh, really good which is setting consequences for not completing the task. So this could be very good if you have this accountability partner, right? So uh, they could be the ones to set the consequences. Maybe that would be a lot of fun as well to see how they, uh, what, what their consequences might be. However, also setting consequences for yourself uh, can uh, help you. And uh, 15, as I already said, using positive affirmations and reminding yourself of the pay capabilities is something that is really good also not uh, not during uh, the tasks you have to accomplish but also during times where you are facing um some something big right so positive self-talk is always a good practice not only for this type of scenario but also for future for going into a job interview for going into your first job whenever you have this five seconds before before you start it as you just say okay i can do this I'm good, uh, I'm capable. And then you just go in and make sure that uh, you succeed. And uh, lastly, uh, I would like to share with you um, a statistic, uh, something that I have come across last week while, pre uh, while preparing this presentation. And it actually really uh, uh, was uh, not life-changing, but it was really something interesting and it is, uh, a statistic from a, from a TED talk. Uh, if you want to watch this TED talk, TED talk is uh, is called "Don't Waste Your Time," and uh, actually, it's actually a good one for for this masterclass. Uh, and uh, uh, the guy who was who was talking in this TED talk uh, showed a statistics uh, where uh, you can see that we have around um, thousand months uh, when you're eighteen to until you're ninety. And out of, out of these thousand months, you have around 330 months of free time. Uh, the other months, of course, are used for work, for, for hygiene, for cooking, for traveling. Uh, 
Yeah, but we have this 330 months to, to of free time. And what what is really, I I think really uh, something that I didn't expect was that, um, in this case we have a. Uh, 312 months, which are expected to be our screen time. So out of this 330 months, 312 months are screen time. And this is so shocking to me. So I would encourage you, if you if, if you uh, think next time I'm going to spend my time uh, or my reward on Instagram or on screen or doing something that is not uh, something beneficial for you, think of the statistics uh, statistic and uh, try to think how else can I spend my free time so that when I'm 90, I can look back and see, well, I've actually uh, done some incredible stuff in my free time. So uh, this was just something that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and this is also uh, the way that I would like to end this presentation. Uh, thank you so much for everything that, um, uh, for uh, being here with us today, uh, for uh, listening to us. Uh, if you have any any questions, you can you can type them in. Uh, we will be happy to to answer some of your questions. And uh, yeah, we'll be here for a bit, and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs>